An ecologist wants DOC to impose daily limits on the number of visitors to Awaroa Inlet, the so-called People's Beach, bought through a crowdfunding campaign. Massey University's Professor Steve Trewick has been visiting the beach for more than two decades and believes publicity to save it has pushed up visitor numbers and the use of quad bikes and water taxis in the area that can't be reached by road. And he fears it could damage the pristine environment. In the last few years, there's been a, a substantial increase in the number of quad bikes on the beach, and it's only a small beach. Um, so if a quad bike goes past you, you, you jolly well know it if you haven't got out of the way. Um, and it's, on the whole, it's, it's unnecessary. Um, now, people could argue that, well, that's what I like to do on the beach. <laughs> And um, perhaps that is what people on the whole, the majority, want to do. They want to drive vehicles up and down on the beach. If that's the case, then we have to completely change our sort of perspective on, 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 on a holiday, on the beach experience, on the summer experience. Are we just getting lazier? I think there is a tendency towards lazy. And in the particular case of Aurora, there are several commercial uh, organisations who are bringing people in, enticing people in, offering a wonderful experience, uh, mostly built around the fact that it is a lovely natural place with tides and birds and sun and wind, um, but then saving them the effort of having to carry their bags uh, a little way to the place they're staying. Um, so the, you know, those uh, organisations every day for every um, water taxi that turns up bring down a, a quad bike and a trailer and drive along the beach, the very beach that people mostly are coming to see to experience the wilderness. Um, and that really does conflict. Well, the, the reason that this place is on our radar, or on many people's radar, is because it was made famous, if you like, by a campaign to, um, to save it from private ownership. So have we actually done the environment there a disservice? <laughs> well... Yeah, it, it seems almost like that. We've certainly uh, challenged our, our uh, objectives. Um, when that came, campaign came about, it was fantastic that so many people got behind and said, well, look, no, this is a piece of New Zealand. We've got to make sure that we keep it as a piece of New Zealand for everyone. And in a sense, that's happened. Everyone can come down and get picked up off the beach and driven to their accommodation and driven back and put back on a water taxi and leave. But um, you then start wondering, well, is, is that what we were saving it for? And I, I think, well, I'm guessing. I don't know. And this is why we're interested in opening up this sort of conversation. So what is should we do what people then? Intended? So what should we oh, do? Well, in that case, I think that there are questions that can be raised about the uh, legality, apart from anything else, of driving quad bikes up and down on that beach. But it's more than a, a, a legal issue. It's about the decisions that we make <laughs> and the way we use our resources and the consideration we have for other people, but also for the environment. And this is a very small example, a tiny example, tucked away in New Zealand of how we people will conflict over the use of resources and have, in the end, a sort of a, 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 a downward spiralling impact. Uh, the same story is going on, obviously, on a massive scale around the world, um, from everything from agriculture to, you know, the water quality. There's a, a concept that we refer to um, as the tragedy of the commons, uh, which encapsulates this very nicely. When you have a space that's available for all to use... And uh, you'd think that that was a positive and good thing for the community. Sadly, there tends to be this sort of down, downgrading of the quality of that resource because some people tend to be a bit more greedy than others. And you can't account for that. Um, so, would we're, you, we're sort of caught. so would you suggest limiting access then? I think I think something seriously has to be done about the quad bikes and you just decide, look, if you're going there, you don't need to use a quad bike to go across the estuary or to get along the beach. So ban them. As far as, as, far as numbers are concerned, um, perhaps there does need to be a decision made about limiting how many visitors there are, not, not in a sort of a nimbiest way that m makes it better for a few individuals that do go, but so that the experience is of high quality as possible for as many people as possible. So you've just kind of put a, a limit on uh, each day's number of people. And the and Department of Conservation, of course, has been doing that on some of the great walking tracks. Mm. Uh, so time to consider doing that for Awaroa as well, in your view? 
it may be that we, 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 we've got to do that. And the only way we can do it easily is by imposing some limits on the water taxis. Of course, that's not a particularly nice thing to say in one way because they're running a, a livelihood out of it. But the conversation has to be had uh, between those people, between the people using the place, the people who are, are running businesses there, and um, the people who don't really have a voice. They just go there and want to experience it. And that is Professor Steve Trewick. Now, the Department of Conservation Golden Bay Operations Manager, Dave Winterburn, told Checkpoint in a statement that we're aware there's sporadic quad bike and tractor use by two or three permanent residents and batch owners at Awaroa. But Doc hasn't noticed any significant increase in tractor or quad bike use at Awaroa as a result of the beach becoming part of the Abel Tasman National Park. However, there may have been a change where the quad bikes and tractors are being driven following cycle clones that hit Awaroa last year. And it says Doc and Project Janzoon are developing plans to better protect native birds breeding at Awaroa Sandspit and using barriers to restrict vehicles and foot traffic on the Sandspit there.